You're married. Right. How many times have you been married? In today's video, we're going to see an interrogation involving a supposedly solved cold case and how in the rush to solve it, law enforcement is willing to cover up information proving a man's innocence. On December 3rd, 1957, the town of Sycamore, Illinois was rocked by the disappearance of seven-year-old Maria Rudolph. Maria had begged her mother to be allowed to go outside to play in the snow, and even though it was already dark, her mother agreed. Maria's friend Kathy was with her, and she later said that they were approached by a man in his early 20s, calling himself Johnny. The man gave Maria a piggyback ride and asked the girls if they liked dolls. Kathy ran back to get hers to show him, and when she returned, the man and Kathy were gone. It wasn't until April 26th of the next year that Maria's body was found. Her skeletal remains were found 100 miles away in a wooded area wearing only a shirt, undershirt, and socks. Decomposition had progressed enough that a cause of death could not be determined. Although an autopsy 50 years later showed evidence that she had been stabbed several times in the throat. Um, four? Four, okay. Do you, you don't remember the dates, do you? No. Okay. <laughs> And, and the places you don't, and yeah. you've been divorced three times? It, or okay. You're investigating a child, right? You're not investigating me. Right. Th this is a personal history form. All right. We, we fill this out for, for every, everybody. Right. Our, our right. command yeah. wants, wants us. Boxes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just do what I'm told, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know why I said you weren't, you weren't from here? Why is that? You got a tan. Oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> and there's a, there's a joke. What do you call somebody in Seattle with a tan? Stranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I just went fishing, and so I was out on the out on the oh, lake. Did and you? I didn't put sunscreen on. And, yeah, yeah. So. Hmm. Uh, you, your wife is Suzanne, correct? Su Su Susan. Susan by Sue. Right. Sue. Okay. Yeah. Do you know her date of birth? Let's see. Uh, Four twelve fifty two. And do you know her maiden name? Um. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to blank at the moment. I'll give it to you in a second. Okay. Um, O'Connor. O'Connor. And does she work? Yeah, she works part time. Same, same place. Security. Same place. Okay. And is she is she a security guard as well? Correct. Okay. Okay. You you uh, are you a registered voter? I am. In Republican. In King County. In King County, yeah. Okay. It's doubtful how much help McCullough is going to be since this cold case is over 50 years old. Memories become hazy and inaccurate, and so far he is only going on hearsay given to him by someone who may have just had a childish grudge against the other boy. In military service. Um, ten years Army, four years Air Force, private to captain. Okay. In both Air Force or? or? No, I was, no, I was just a, e, a, a E2 in the Air Force. Ah, okay. Okay. So captain in, in the Army then? Huh? Yeah, I went, I went, well I actually went from private to captain in the Army. Oh, I, okay. I got out of the Air Force and I stayed out for a year. And then I went back in the army. And the best thing I ever did was I couldn't put straps on fast enough. They hmm. finally, finally asked me if I wanted a commission. Well, can't beat that. Though. No, I was in army intelligence for quite a while. Oh, very good. Do you remember your service number? Um, it's the same. It, it, yeah. Well, let me see. My original service number, the Illinois service number, is AF sixteen fifty nine zero five one three, and that's really reaching back. <laughs> a A F sixteen fifty nine fifty nine oh five one three one three. Now that was that was in the Air Force, of course. Okay. The Army has uses a Social Security number for you. Okay. But I also had an officer's number, but I can't remember it anymore. Okay. And type of discharge? Honorable, of course. Okay. Read write registered voter of King King County. Absolutely. You attended Sycamore High School? Correct. For how many years? Um, ten. 
10 years in high school? No, no, 10th grade. Oh, 10th grade, okay. Okay, did you go to college? I did. W where did you go to college Several at? Several colleges. The last one yeah. is uh, Shoreline Community College, which is nearby. So that's here. Yeah, and they all, they all have my entire record of every place I went. Yeah. And what what year was that? Yeah, the last Shoreline. year I was there was probably uh, um, 97. 97? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Addicted to drugs, habitual user. Yeah, right. Okay. I, it, it's here. I'm not. I'm not just making this stuff up. Um, okay. Okay. The final thing that we do for everyone in Illinois is uh, witness, suspect. I just want to advise you of your rights. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, before we ask you any questions, it's my duty to advise you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you can say can and will be used against you in a court or other proceedings. <coughs> you have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and have him with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you free of cost before questioning if you wish. And you understand that. That's all good advice. I'm on your side on this. Okay. I'm trying to help you. Right. I, I mean, I, like I said, we just... I, yeah, right, right. Got to right. follow the boss's rules. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Because if the forms ain't filled out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. When are you going to get to the good part now? We, we are we are done with my okay. part. <laughs> I I had um, I had a dream, and and then it reminded me of a conversation I had as a kid. There's a, a little grade school that's only a block away from my home in Sycamore, which is 226. Oh, you want to write that down? The address in Sycamore? Okay. 227 Center Cross Street. Sycamore, and I don't remember the step. 601? 601? That's fine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and this. I, I was talking. I was talking to a, a kid, and he said, "You see that guy over there?" And the, he was, we. I was probably thirteen. And and, uh, well, I don't know how old I was. In, was it fifty-seven? You said mm -hmm. fifty-seven. I was. I was uh, probably seventeen, eighteen, seventeen. Anyway, and he said, he said, "Stay away from that kid." McCullough's idyllic descriptions of his hometown sound like something out of a black and white sitcom, which makes the abduction and murder of Maria Rudolph stand out in stark contrast. He, he, he wants to talk about sex. Okay, so I, this, this, this kid, oh, now I'm going to have to reach back and remember his name. I, I think I, I wrote it to the FBI. But I, um, I, it bothered me enough where I, I called up. And he lived with with uh, two two boys named Davies. Uh, Don Davies is one of them, and I don't remember the other one. But he was he was a he was a kid they allowed to stay with them. He didn't have a, a home in in Sycamore. So he's like a foster kid kind of a thing. And on the same block as Maria lived. Well, you know, let me kind of, because I want to, I want to come back to this because this is part of what I want to talk about. But um, kind of help me. You know, you, you were, I think you said about seventeen or so at the time. Um, kind of take me back and give me a flavor of what. Sycamore was like. Where oh was my it? God, Sycamore! Sycamore is Mayberry RFD. It was a wonderful place to grow up, and um, I knew everybody. I had paper routes all over town, so I had personal knowledge of everybody. The, um, it was it was just a it's a great town. It still is, but it's it's grown a little bit too much. A lot of people from Chicago moved out. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, everything gets bigger, you know. I, I yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Well, if you ever get a chance, go there. Oh, I've been through. I've been through there many times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I. Uh, it's a great old town. Um, if I was going to raise kids, that's where I'd be like. So, um, 
at that time, how did you how did you kind of get around town? I mean, was there bus routes or was it oh, never, bicycles? I never or? took a bus. I had when I, when I was younger, it was always a bicycle, and then I uh, became a teenager, and I and I got a, an old plunker. My first my first car was a forty eight Plymouth coupe. My my, uh, my best friend in high school had a. Uh, Forty nine DeSoto sitting on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so um, so what what, uh, what color was that? It was a gray. So is that a two door or? A it's a two door. Two -door. Yeah. So how did you end up uh, getting that? I uh, had paper route. Oh, so basically just saved up and. I paid for it by the week. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it was. Uh, um, so was this then a, like a family car? Or no, it's my car. Okay, so you didn't give him. Nobody else drove it. Then it was just primarily yours. This so. is my car. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you didn't loan it out to buddies or anything. No, then? no. Okay. Um, and now you've got some siblings, I think. That you, you what? What? Uh, what was the family? Oh, my kids? Yeah, you're, not your kids, but um, oh. your, your mom. Five dad. sisters and one brother. And, and so everybody was in the 227 residence, huh? Yeah. And parents were? Uh, Ralph and Eileen. How do you, how do you spell Eileen? E-I-L-E-E-N. Um, and was he, it seemed like you just said he was a foster, or not a foster, a stepdad yeah, or correct, something? Correct. Stepdad, okay. Yeah. Um, and so how, how old were, was the rest of the group around this December 3rd? Um, okay, I was the oldest, so, um... I don't even remember their ages now. Kathy was probably um, three years younger than me. The oddest part about the witness statements is that if it had been McCullough, he should have been able to be identified by name and without any question that it was him. In fact, Maria's best friend, Kathy Sigmund, was with Maria when the man first approached him, and she talked to him for a while herself. They all lived in the same neighborhood, so she, at the very least, knew McCullough by sight. However, she picked a different man completely during the lineup, a man who had a solid alibi for the time of the crime. And my brother's probably five years younger. And I had another sister who was couple of years younger. I don't, I don't even remember. What, what are the other um, sisters' names? Kathy, Kathy, Jeannie, Janet, Mary Pat, Nancy Jo. Now, um, were they Ralph and Eileen's children. Yes. So, so you were you're the only step to, to Ralph then. Huh? Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, the um, how did I mean? What were they like to grow up with? Great. So, no conflicts. No. No. You know, just kind of. Yeah. Um, it's Mayberry. I'm Mayb you. Mayberry. Yeah. Huh? Okay. So leave it to Beaver kind yeah, of exactly. thing. Huh? Okay. Okay. Um, so there, you would find them to be honest, kind. Exactly. People. So the trustworthy. Also. And all of them brighter than me. Well, that's. <laughs> then they must be pretty smart. Huh? Yeah. Um, now I want to I want to go back to. Um, the, you know, and, and this to me is kind of a, a thing, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we all remember where we were when President Kennedy was shot or 9-11 happened, yeah, 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 or, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and this is, 
kind of the 9-11 for Sycamore. I mean, <laughs> anybody who we've talked to who's... This is gonna, you're going to like this. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so so tell, me, tell me kind of what you remember about that. Um, the day Maria was kidnapped, I was in the induction center in Chicago joining the Air Force. I spent the entire day there, and they have a record of it minute by minute. Well, if one thing the military is good about is keeping records, huh? Yes, yes. Okay. Requisition this, we need to triplicate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really pissed. The FBI had talked to me back then as a, as a suspect, and, uh, and they even interrogated me. And um, it's because the suspect that they think took Maria had a green coat and I had a favorite green jacket at the time. So, you know, I'm sure they asked the neighbors, you know, anybody with a green jacket? And yeah, Jack's got one. <laughs> um, so, let's, you, so how did you wind up at the induction center? Let's... I don't know how I got there. I, I may have taken the train. But um, I was there um, most of the day, and uh, uh, and, yeah, and you can check with the FBI because they 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 gave me a lie detector test, and. Uh, I was disappointed in them, really, really disappointed, because I had an ironclad alibi of where I was. And they didn't even check. Didn't even make a phone call. I was very disappointed. Well, let's, let's go back and, and kind of walk me through, because um, they said you, you, let's go to the day before, because you were, you were going downtown or something. Um, Tell me as much as you can remember about, in as much detail as you can remember. Oh, you mean about downtown Chicago? Yeah. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> the green machine there. You ever been through there? Downtown? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, you've been through the induction center. Oh, gosh, no. No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. Oh, yeah, it was spread your cheeks and all that stuff all day long. And... Uh, at the end of it, they, I got sworn in, and it wasn't very long. I was on a train to um, Fort Knox. Okay, now, it, it seemed that there was something in the file about um, that you you had a medical problem or something. No medical problem. That there was a spot on the lung or something? Oh, that was when I was a child, yeah. It's no wonder McCullough is frustrated. There's no realistic reason for him to remember his movements from so long ago, right down to the time of day. What happened was a horrible tragedy, but not one personal enough for the memories to be seared into someone's head, especially not a freshly graduated 17-year-old. I, I had TB. Ah, okay. And um, miracle happened, and my my body cured my TB. Okay. So. Um, that was at, that was at three years old in, in Ireland. Okay, so um, you know, according to the to the report, you, you they saw the spot on your lung, yeah. and they failed you. But then you had to stay and, and no, 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 I I passed because the scar was the, was long gone by then. I mean, the scar is still there, but the uh, I I. At when I first came over in 1946, on Queen Mary, by the way, um, it wasn't long. They put me in the sanitarium for observation. They found I had nothing, so that was the end of that. And uh, I have, um, I had uh, good health in the service. Okay, so um, what what the. Um what the report said is you had to stay downtown overnight. I don't remember that. At some YMCA or something? I don't remember that. 
What What do you remember? How did you How did How did you get downtown? See, I don't remember. I mean, we're, we're talking about many years ago. Um, I know no family member was with me, so I don't think anybody drove me there. So I must have taken the train. And. Uh, Now, did you have to purchase your own ticket? Did they give you a ticket? I don't know. Just don't remember it all. Is it important? Um, yeah, I mean, we're just trying to, I mean, as much as you can remember is, is important. Yeah. You know, because I mean, I appreciate the fact that we're talking about, you know, No, you look at me as a suspect, man. I don't like this. Well, I'm, I'm, as I told you, there's been some discrepancies in, you know, interviews that we're having, and that's why I'm, I'm uh, trying to find these things out to try to see what's you know what happened, what went on, and whatever. And and I'm looking for you to be as candid as you can and I'm, be as remember as I'm much trying. as you can. I'm trying, but you're you're barking up the wrong tree. If there's nothing well, there. Well, I, I may be barking up the wrong tree, but I'm trying to find out what happened on the day and where you were on the day she disappeared. I already told you. Well, but I spent I want, the entire day in Chicago that day. Okay, but what time did you get home? Because she wasn't abducted at noon, so that doesn't mean anything to me that you were downtown. I don't, I, I accept I the don't fact even that know when she was abducted. I, I assumed it was daytime. So nobody ever told you that? Nobody ever told me. Okay. okay. Um, so what... Um, Tell me, let's start at the beginning. So you went into the induction center. What time did you get there? Got my car. Okay. Um, what station did you go out of? Oh, see, you can do all this research in Chicago. Well, I know I can, but I, I want to hear what you have to say. And I'm telling you, it's vague. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, well, here's the thing. Um, is that the story that you gave the FBI... Yeah just doesn't match up. Match up to what? To what people say. What people say about what? What people said you were doing and where you were. Nobody knows what I was doing that day. Well, because I was in Chicago. You do, and the people, well, when you got back, to, when you got back in the evening, what did you do? This was a big day. I mean, it, this is a day that... I probably crashed because it was a hard day. So you, you think you were home asleep? I'm assuming. I, I, I didn't have any place else to go. I go home. So why why would people say you weren't there? Who? What people? Your sisters. They don't know. Oh, well, they say they do. They don't know where where I was back then. Yeah, they do. No. Mm -hmm. um. All right, we're done. Well, I'm disappointed because here's the thing. You're disappointed that, that I don't have a memory of it? No, I'm, I'm actually, I, I am disappointed in that because I hoped you would have some explanations. And th my sisters think I was had anything to do with her abduction? They just said you weren't home. McCullough is clearly confused. He's not even denying what they're saying, merely repeating that he doesn't remember any of this. He can already tell that they are suspicious, and he should know that they want to pin this on anyone they can after so long. This would have been a perfect time for him to demand a lawyer. Because I was in Chicago. Overnight? I don't remember where I stayed. I don't remember how I got home. It's 1957. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, how about if I if I tell you what you told the FBI? What do you think I told the FBI? What they put in your report okay. about the interview that you had. All right. Okay. See if this helps you at all. Um, Um, 
said that you, that you had gone on the 2nd of December, which would have been the day before, and that um, you got a, a train ticket for, for Rockford, and that you went down to the city and then that you um, were, were rejected because of the spot, and that they asked you to stay overnight at the YMCA, and then you went to the second day. I don't remember any of this. And that you had a, another physical exam, apparently. And then you came back to Rockford. I might have joined in Rockford, but that's just paperwork. And I joined twice. I, I, I uh, because I got out for a year and went back. And I went. Rockford wasn't in the first thing at all. I don't think. Rockford was the second time I enlisted, which would have been 1960 or 61. Well, apparently the, you were delivering stuff to Rockford to the post office. No recollection of that. Well, that's what you told them. I told who? The FBI. So I'm assuming you didn't lie to them, right? I'm, no, but I, I don't remember anything about this. Okay, but I, I, I'm just, I mean, if you lied to them about something, then this is incorrect. If you told them the truth about that, then the, the information that they have in their report should accurately f reflect what you told them. Would that be correct then? If you've got any kind of documentation from back then, great. But I don't remember any of it. Okay, so... Um, the, st the story that, that you told the FBI was that um, you got, um, on, on December 3rd, you, you went to some burlesque shows after you left the, the green machine or whatever you called it, and then took a train back to Rockford at 5 o'clock, and it got you in about 8.30. That's, or not 8.30. That's, um, Sounds reasonable. Okay. I mean, do, do you back, remember? Back to where? To Rockford. Why would I go for Rockford when I live in Sycamore? I don't know. That's where you claim to have been. The only only uh, attachment I had to Rockford, besides mar marrying my wife from there, um, was um, the induction center was there. Not the induction, but the... The um, what do you call it? Recruiting office. The recruiting office was there. Okay. I went to. I went with a buddy. He wanted to. He wanted to join the service, and it's fine. Um, let me tell you this quick story. Mm -hmm. but, um, I, I hate water, and I fear drowning. <laughs> so I wasn't joining the Navy, but my buddy and I took the Navy test. I didn't give a shit, so I just marked anything. I just randomly marked anything. I passed, he failed. Well, that's how I passed uh, two Spanish classes uh, in uh, college. Was uh -huh. Just randomly marked yeah. stuff. And <laughs> didn't work for me. I took first year Latin twice. Um, so the, the, the story that you tell the FBI is... There was a lie detector test and McCullough passed it. While it is technically possible for a guilty person to pass, it's highly unlikely that someone his age during that time period would have been able to do so. That uh, you, you go down on the second, you fail uh, because of this spot, so they redo, they talk to the recruiter and they re-examine you on the third. And then you finish that and then you go to a burlesque house or a couple of burlesque houses. I don't remember anything like that. Well, I would hope you'd remember that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and and so then you take the train back to Rockford. 
and you go to the post office to drop some papers off. Don't know. But if you you told them that, that would be an accurate reflection if they put it in the report that way. I would right? assume. Okay. Um, and then they um, said that you made a, a call home to get a ride. How did how did you do you think how would you get up to Rockford? Um, don't know if I had my car then. I think I sold it. So Dad would have probably come and got me. Okay, so how would you have got up there? From in, in what time frame? What did I what day? Well on, on the second. On the second? Um, maybe with the buddy that we went to the different places with. So who, who do you think that might have been? Oh, no idea. Well, who, who did you hang around back uh, back then? He, I don't even think I don't even think he was a friend of mine. We, I think I was just he was just along. So who who would he have been? I have no idea. Then how do you how do you know you don't have a relationship with him? Because I have no idea. Ah, I see. Um, so then they they say that um, you went and had coffee and a piece of pie. Why would I do tell them shit like that? That doesn't mean. I don't know. I I wasn't there. I'm just going by what yeah, you told right. them. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to go back and say, you're saying they said, because I don't know it. I'm just telling you what they wrote in their official report okay. to, to hear. So I, I wasn't obviously there because yeah, yeah. I was probably still in diapers. Yeah. Um, so then, then they said that um, your dad came and got you. Probably. Okay. And then they said that um, you were going to go out with your girlfriend. So? Well, I, I'm just asking if you remember. Don't remember. Okay. Um, but that's what they say anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that you had a date with her. I had, I had a girlfriend back when I was going to go into service, yeah. And what was her name? Janice Edwards. Okay. Um, and then they said that you were on a date with her until 10.30, and then you went out searching for Maria. Oh, I remember searching. We went out to, uh, to some farms in DeKalb. And when did you do that? Don't know. I mean, was it that night? Don't know. Okay. How did you get out to the farms in DeKalb? Drove. So you took your car? Probably. Okay. And, and who did you go with? Um, I don't know if I went with anybody. There was a, there were lots of people searching at the time. I just joined in with some people that were going here and there. Okay. Um, so nobody that you knew, or you just nobody I knew. Okay. Um, and then said that you, um, the following day, which would have been the fourth, um, you went searching with um, Jack Manis. And then you, you found um, sex magazines that you turned into the police. Maria's body was discovered 100 miles from her hometown. McCullough is supposed to have been out of town, and most people in town were out searching the area. There isn't a long enough period of time for him to have killed her and disposed of the body. True, he could have hidden it and disposed of it later, but the risk of her being found would be pretty high, and it would have been noticed if he disappeared for any length of time, since he was already being looked at as a suspect. I don't remember anything like that. And Jack Manis, although I knew him, um, not the kind of guy I hang around with. Mm -hmm. but that's what you told the FBI, was that you did that with him. Okay. Um, so,
So the, um, the, the problem is that if we accept this story as what you told them, I mean, unless they just made up lies about you, okay? So we take this as... See, the, the thing that bothers me is I don't remember even talking to them that much. I remember taking the lie detector test, and that's it. There was a guy that was assigned to me, and he drove me around a lot. He drove me around town and asked me if I had any ideas about different people that uh, they may be looking at, or if I had any ideas who might know anything. And um, that's, uh, he was a really nice guy too, I really, I really liked him. Um, but uh, after the after they did the life take the test, they let me go and didn't bother me anymore. Okay. Um, so the when when we start to to look at at the story that you tell here, okay, and we've done a lot of interviews. There's things that just um, aren't aren't right. Okay. Um, first of all, you had the nickname Johnny, I think. Yeah. Okay. But, so the person that was introduced themselves to the girls said he was Johnny. Okay. Who knows? Okay. Um, the description of the person um, matches you down to the, the gap in the teeth. Yeah, that's that's. Well, really was surprising. Yeah, well, I'm sure, but, you know, that's that's what they, the height, the weight. But see, but I, that was my neighborhood. Everybody knew me. So if they if they had seen me on the street, Maria's parents knew me. I used to play with their, their, their daughters in the backyard. See, and that's, you know, um, well, the, uh, the description isn't coming from Maria, though. It's coming no, she from, was, from, from she was Kathy. kidnapped. Right. It's coming from Kathy, the other girl that was there. So she she described somebody who looked remarkably like you and had the gap in the teeth, the same color hair. I, um, no, see, I didn't hear anything about these descriptions. The only thing I heard was he had a, a green jacket. Well actually it was a it was a sweater that, that was the description. All right, I don't have a and green sweater, had, I had a jacket. Well, and it wasn't a green sweater. It was a multicolored sweater. See, it's not me. Yeah, well, and but your your family says that you had a multicolored sweater that was just the same description. And that after Maria disappears, that sweater disappears. Oh, this is bullshit. Well, that's why I want to sit and talk to you about it. I mean, it might this be bullshit, bullshit but... Number one, I don't ever remember a multicolored sweater. I didn't, I, my favorite favorite jacket was a fuzzy green jacket that I, which I bought myself. Um, my favorite shirt at the time was a, a, a blue silk shirt, kind of shiny. And um, Well this, this apparently was a sweater that, that you wore all the time and then no, nobody in the family saw it after. Don't, Maria so there's no records in Chicago at the, at, at the induction center? Oh, I, I'm not even questioning the induction center. We're, we're talking about in Sycamore is what I'm talking about now. Yeah. I, I accept the fact you were in the in, induction center. Absolutely, you were there. Absolutely. Okay, I, I don't doubt that for a second. Right. Okay, but now we're talking about the evening of the third. Because she isn't she isn't taken till six p.m. So what happens on the so second you know and what that? happens all day long and on the third downtown in the induction center is really irrelevant. I didn't even know that. Yeah. You know, and I, I didn't hear until years later that some uh, mushroom hunters found her somewhere. McCullough isn't buying what they're saying about his girlfriend. They aren't under any legal obligation to be truthful, and all they really want to do is make an arrest. For that to happen, circumstantial evidence will do just fine. Um, down south. Mm -hmm. um, so, here's here's... Uh, here's the, the 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 other issues. Let me just go through it. I, you know, kind yeah, of yeah. kind of. I want to tell you what you said 
and then what everybody else says, just to be fair to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the um, that you call your um, your your house with a flat call, and you're on the phone for about two minutes. I did that in a lot. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you did it the evening of her disappearance. Okay. Um, now, it's supposed to be for somebody to go pick you up. Um, now, the family says well, that nobody can go pick you up because Ralph's not at home. He's taking Kathy to a 4-H club meeting in DeKalb someplace. Okay? And by the time he gets back, The um, it's it's like 8.30, 20 to 9, because the police have already been contacted. There's squad cars all over the place. Everybody's looking for, for Maria who's gone. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you tell the FBI that your dad picks you up at 8 o'clock. But he can't, because... He's he's running your sister back and forth from this. This is all so what? Because who who knows about what time exactly you do anything? I was a kid. Well, we we know we know for sure that she she had this. We know what time the uh, police were contacted. We know what time they arrived. So for for her to see these all these cars and ask what happened, it all it already has to be done. So. At this, at this point, um, it's 8.30, 20 to 9. Now, you, in your statement to the FBI, claim that... McCullough did not have a good relationship with his siblings and was estranged from his entire family for most of his life. There could be several reasons. The first is that he did molest them in some way. The second, they recalled something that they did as young children and blamed him. Another factor that should be considered is that McCullough was a half-sibling and quite often they were treated poorly and attempted to be pushed away from the rest of the family for not really belonging. You're back in town at 9.20. So? Well. It's a half an hour drive to, to Rockford. Okay. But you also say that you're going out on a date with, with Jan. And Jan says, we can go out on a date. Yeah, and, we, and she said, I know we didn't go out on a date because my parents wouldn't let me out of the house because of what was going on with the abduction of Maria. Oh. So, so now we have a couple of other inconsistencies. Why are, we, why are you telling people you went on a date when you couldn't have gone on a date? Who said I couldn't have gone on a date? Well, Jan says. She says her parents wouldn't let her out of the house. You weren't there. Um... So, I mean, that's, that's, I'm just telling you, okay, yeah. you know, I mean, just, you know, I can, I can only go by what you told me the FBI. I don't even remember any of this. Okay. Well, I'm telling you what, what the FBI wrote and yeah. what, uh, yeah. okay. what they said. And, um, um, so how does that make me a suspect? Well, let's, let's review. Your name is Johnny. Yeah. The guy who took him says his name is Johnny. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, his description, including the gap in the teeth looks just like you. Um, we've got a sweater that matches what she describes the guy was There's wearing. There's a car description, isn't there? Oh, I, I have, I, we'll come to that. All right. Okay. Um, but that, that sweater disappears. Yeah. Um, you say your dad picks you up, Ralph, and yet Ralph can't be picking you up because he's taking care of your sister running her back and forth. You say, I went out on a date with my girlfriend. She says, no, we didn't. My parents wouldn't let me go out. He never came over. You say, I stayed, um, I stayed the night. Where? In your home. Probably. The girls say, you weren't there. And they know you weren't there because Ralph and your mom went to help search and help to feed the people and they put a lock on the front door so that it couldn't get in 
they put a two by four across the back door so they couldn't get in and they told the girls one of you has to sleep on the couch and let us in when we get here they come home at four or five o'clock in the morning let them in you're not there so where are you i might be in chicago you can't be in chicago well, you could be in chicago but you said you were in rockford your phone call comes from rockford so you can't be in chicago if the phone call collect is from rockford um this is all bullshit i don't know anything about it i can't remember um any of this that you're telling me um well, let's let's go. And and um, and you're trying. Uh, let me let me just continue here. You're trying you, to say there's a pattern, and there's no pattern. I was in Chicago when this all happened. No, you weren't, because it happened at six o'clock at night. Yeah. You're already you're already in Rockford, so you can't be in Chicago. Well, if I'm in six o'clock in Rockford, where where where's seven, a seven o'clock in Rockford? Well, where where um, where's where's the objection? Um, the problem is is that nobody nobody sees you searching in the evening so what the detective is saying doesn't even make sense yes many girls keep mementos pictures paper programs and concert tickets just to name a few but they are all things that have emotional significance a train ticket for a trip they didn't even take together wouldn't make that list and why would he even give that to her they may have come up with such a ticket but there still seems to be something off about the whole thing I, I wasn't going. searching in the evening. I didn't even know about it until, so then, until where, later. Where did you go? Huh? I mean, this is a big deal. Everybody's out searching, screaming for the little girl. No, I, went, I went searching like the next day. Well, see, and that's the same thing. You, to, the, to the FBI, you say that you're with uh, Jack Manis and that you find magazines, sex magazines, that you turn into the police department. The police department says, we didn't get any magazines from anybody. Jack Manis says, number one, you weren't with him. Number two, he didn't find any magazines, and if he did find them, he would have kept them. This so um, this is all this is all bogus. I don't remember anything about any magazine. Well, I'm just telling you what the what you told the FBI. What they say, I said. Well, I, I'm not saying I said it. Well, I, I'm I, just, it sounds to me like they're making shit up, and I'm telling you already how disappointed I am in the FBI. Well, I I would say. Um, you know, you also told the FBI um, that you had some sex play with your sister. Oh my God! I took I took a lie detector test. I, we're talking about about what you said. Yeah, did, right. Did you have sex and, with your sister? And they and they and they said, and 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 he and he he said, when was this? I said when we were little. Okay. Now your sister says that it wasn't just when you were little. So, well. So what I'm pointing out here is that if you say you told them the, F the FBI the truth yeah. and you were little and yet at the same time you're having sex with, with your sister. I am not having sex with my sisters. They say you are. I am not. Not now. I don't know if you're now. You probably Did not. not. But, well, that's not what they say. Did not. That's not what they say. Doesn't matter. Well, that's fine. I'm just telling you what not just one but multiple sisters have said. Right. Okay. Um, they they also say well actually um, Dave Frederick says that he saw your car driving in the late afternoon in Sycamore. So. Well, you said nobody drives your car but you. I'm telling you, I don't remember any of this. I'm just telling you what everybody's saying. All right. Um, your mother also says um, that to uh, Janet and Mary that you killed her, Maria. This is a lie. This is a lie. My but, mother loved me to death. I know she did. And she, she did, and she and and she was crying when the FBI wanted to talk to me. I, I have no doubt because she also she also told them some some lies. To the FBI. My mother doesn't lie. Well, she said you were home all night, and the girls sat right there and said, he couldn't be in. We looked. He wasn't home. The doors are all locked. Nobody can get in without us opening the door. And your mother didn't tell the FBI the truth. Now, she may have been protecting you, but I have... Protecting me by saying I murdered them? Murdered a girl? 
I, I think that's what she was thinking that you did here. And I think no, this is bullshit. It's all bullshit. My mother wouldn't say that. Your mother did say that. She didn't. Yeah. No, she didn't. Well, and, and here's here's the other problem is that because um, my mother knew where I was that day. Forget about during the day at the at the army. That means nothing. Because the, the incident doesn't happen until 6 o'clock at night. I, I agree with you. I absolutely, 100%, absolutely, 100% agree that you were down in the city having a physical. Yeah. Okay. That's irrelevant. Yeah. The incident doesn't happen till after 6 at night. And where was I? Well, you claim that you're in Rockford. So? So... Where does, where does the train get up? In Rockford. It doesn't go to Sycamore. Well, apparently not. Okay, and if I'm in, if I'm in Rockford at 7 o'clock, I make a phone call from there at 7 o'clock and ask for a ride? Yeah, but nobody can come get you. So, I've got a, hit, I've got a thumb. I can hitchhike. Well, you know, the other problem is that... Um, you know, we, we, we can take all this stuff that's being said here, but when you when you you're given a ticket by the by the military to go sure. downtown, right? sure. Okay, um, so it doesn't make any sense not to not to take the ticket. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the problem is that the ticket didn't get used. Yeah. I mean, you know how the you know how the military is. Here's your, here's your ticket to go to Rockford, or to go from Rockford to Chicago. You never used it. You know where this comes from? Jan Edwards. You know how women are sentimental, they keep everything? Yeah. She's got a picture of you, and she said, yeah, John gave me this. That's really funny. Well, I think it's, it's not funny. I think it's, it questions whether or not you were involved in this. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm not involved. You can give me a lie detector test. Test. I'll pass it. Okay. All right. Why don't Why don't we do that right now? All right. Okay. Good. You want another cup of coffee? No. Okay. Be back with you in just a second. I'm hey. going to talk to you. You want to talk to me? Yeah. About what? About what? Who I think did. Okay. Nobody's Nobody seems to be interested in what I What I'm saying. Okay. I may have to contact you again when I come up with a name because... It, I'll give it, you my business card. It's in here. Great. great okay. Great. Okay. But this kid with, that lived with the Davies. Now, the Davies lived on the same side of the street as Maria, two blocks up. They lived right across the street from this little grade school. And... Anyway, years later, it, it just kind of dawned on me, this guy would have been perfect. He was about my height. He looked something like me. Mm -hmm. um, you said what, what was his name? I'm trying to think of it. What the investigator is telling him is that it doesn't matter in relation to the actual case. It is just something that they will potentially use against him in court. Once a judge or jury hears this, it will be almost impossible for it not to influence their decision. Oh, but, but it's, it's, it's not the, coming to you. It's not coming to me. Okay. But I, 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 when I called the FBI, I gave them the name. So they should have it. They should have it. Okay. Anyway, this guy um, did look something like me, and I don't know if he had a gap in his teeth, but he, he was weird. And how do you know that? This kid told me, and I observed. Okay, okay. So and, you, you, and you don't you don't know that firsthand I don't that he's know. weird. I like what's weird. Okay, not normal. Um, you observed this, or yes. this is what this I other observed, voice. This is what I observed. Okay, I'd seen him around the neighborhood a few times, and um, I didn't like him, so I didn't have any kind of a relationship or con conversation even with him. But I remember him that day on a school ground and one of the kids telling me, if I knew that guy, 
and I, and, and I said, I said I knew him, and he was he wasn't standing very far from me, and he said, he talks about sex and but like little kid stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and and stay away from him. So I just recorded that and then promptly forgot it until years later. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but you want you understand what David is is talking about, correct? I mean, you know some some things happen, and you understand that. I don't know what are you talking. No, about? well, well, the 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 inconsistencies and and whatnot, and you yeah. know, you can you can find anything from anything. Okay. And and. Um, I was devastated by that, that that little girl was taken. Mm -hmm. w w would there be a reason why your mom would say something like that? Um, there is no reason why she said, I don't believe it, it's, it was said. Um, my mother loved me. She, you guys were close, you and your we mother. We were very close. Mm -hmm. You loved her. Absolutely. She loved you. I adored her. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why do you think she would say something like she that? She didn't say something like that. She wouldn't say something like that. Yeah. This is a lie. Who do you think's lying? Uh, whoever's talking. Okay. Do Do you talk to your family members now? No. 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 What, why? No. I mean, you guys are brothers and sisters. Grew up together. We've all just grown apart. Just grown up, grown apart. Yeah. Why did you move out to Seattle? Um, I was uh, um, in the military here. Okay. You didn't want to move back to Sycamore. God no. Why? Take it's, a look, it's Mayberry. Take a look around. It's Mayberry. Take a look around. How many mountains you got in Illinois? Um, no. You got you got one hill, 150 feet tall, starved rock. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. And, and and we got we got everything here. We got wonderful, beautiful weather. Yeah. We got the mountains. We got the um, trees and. The, Forest, Illinois doesn't have any of that. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Um, you said when you were younger, you, you had a sexual encounter with your sister. Accidentally, on purpose, whatever. Doesn't matter. That was the only time that that happened? Um, Jack, j just be honest with me. I, I don't know. You um, don't know if that was the only time? No. So oh. there could have been other times. Yeah. A as but, you got older, there could have been other times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But this this doesn't make me a suspect in a murder. I, 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 did I say that? No. I, no, I didn't say that. All right. Well, hey, why would you say that? Why are you talking about it? It's just information that we've gotten. All right. And I and I when 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 Dave asked you, it only happened once. You said yes. I never ever had. A sexual encounter with my sisters other than that. This might be a bit of a small town prejudice on the part of McCullough. The boy wasn't from Sycamore and had no known family, so it isn't surprising that he was looked down on by his peers, but that is only a possibility. There very well could have been something wrong. Either way, it doesn't look like that the boy was seriously investigated. Well, that's a lie. I never had sex. Okay. What did you have? Just playing around. Okay. All right. Okay. So playing around with your s sisters. Yeah. Okay. Th that's you know what that we just want you to be honest. You know. Yeah. And and when Dave asked you that, it he he said, said sex. Okay. Well, I, I mean, you know what we mean. No, I don't. Okay. I'm not going to assume anything, and you guys shouldn't be assuming things either. Right, exactly. But but why didn't you clear that up when Dave? No, I didn't have sex. We played around. We screwed around. But you said no. I did not have sex. You, you know, uh, I, I just we, we just want you to be honest. You know, it it, it, it it'll make it a lot What's easier it got for to do you with this and little me. girl. It, it, it's just a background of your childhood and your life. We've talked to people. We've talked to people. The questions that we ask you, we know the answers. You think you know the answers? Well, 
I, 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 because everything he's saying me saying to me is I don't have a recollection of any of it. Well, it's it's funny because you have a recollection of some things, a strong recollection of some things. Yeah. But then you can't remember other things. Yeah. You know, and and like you said, this is like nine eleven, Kennedy. I mean, this was huge in Sycamore. Am I I'm right? Let me tell you something. I did not kidnap that little girl. I, I did. Listen, look, you look at my eyes. I did not have anything to do with that little girl. Okay. It, it, she was loved in the neighborhood. She was a little Mexican girl with big brown eyes, and she was sweet as could be, hardly said a word to anybody, and everyone loved her. Okay. This was crushing for the entire oh, for city. community. And it Absolutely. Was in, it was in crushing for me as well because I knew the family. Okay. All right. Um, let, I'm going to, I'm going to take a break. I mean, real good coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> good Folgers you, instant. You know somebody, huh? <laughs> Jack, Dan, no, I know this. I don't think someone else would this. I don't know. I want some good coffee. Sure. Right. Sure. Sugar cream, cream, please, thanks. What a guy. Thank you. What does that say? Huh? What does that say? In a white castle? Yeah, I'm sure you remember those, right? Yeah, thank you. Especially if you were in the army back in, uh, Appreciate in, it. in Chicago or you were. Buy him by the side. <laughs> you remember how that? Buy him by the side? No. I've been back in Chicago when. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been back in 28 years. Yeah. So, same fucking thing. That's great. Thank you. Enjoy. Yeah. That didn't go too good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's all right. Are you going to arrest me? Um, quite honestly, I haven't made a decision yet because okay. I've still I've got some issues with this that I can't resolve okay. without you. Okay. And um, um, so, you know, what I wanted to do was, you know, have you again kind of think through because, again, I, I appreciate the fact that we're talking a long time ago, okay? And, you know, if we can come up with, you know, Alternative. Okay, you haven't got shit or the FBI would have arrested me. I'm, I'm done talking to you. Well, that's, that makes my evening short then. Yep, it? yep. Okay. Well, is he free to go? No. Okay. So. Did you, did you say no? I said no. Yep. Okay. You know. Yes. So we'll, uh, we'll be back to tell you what, uh, what the arrangements for this evening will be then. Great. I need a phone call.
Hey, you need to go to the restroom? Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, those guys either got to let, arrest me or let me go. Yeah. I'll come back and tell you about it in one minute. I was just asking that. I'm going to come back and talk to you. Thanks. All right? All right. I think you had a good night's sleep. I work nights. Well, I know. So that's right. Well, good. Well, good night. Yeah, good night. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That may be, uh... It's implied that McCullough should remember where Murillo is found. The investigator makes it sound almost sinister that he doesn't. But by the time her body was recovered, McCullough had been in the Air Force. And even if someone had mentioned it in a letter, it's doubtful that he would have retained the exact information. But it seems to be one of the rules of interrogations. If you can't get them to confess, at least get them to say something that can be twisted into circumstantial evidence. They might be real hot. Yeah, it's battery acid. <laughs> I mean, that's like the best, uh, that's like the best... Cop coffee. <laughs> Cop coffee? Well, I don't like coffee. No. This, is your, this is your morning. It's not my morning. Yeah, yeah. Things didn't go well in the polygraph, I gather? Um, no, I, it was, she was fishing, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm anxious for this case to be solved. We're talking about the murder of a little girl. Mm -hmm. But if she's fishing in my personal life, um, I ain't answering any questions like that. Well, your personal life is what's at issue right now. No, the little girl's at issue. Correct. Does anything make me a murderer? I'm not. That's a good point. And that's one of the point I was going to bring up to you. Yeah. Uh, now you know, did you do any research on me after you found out who I was? I don't know who you are. You know who I am. I know, I know you're, you're Mike Sosinski. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I know. You know, I'm a cold case detective, right? Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. For the Seattle Police Department, right? Yeah, right. I, you, you answered that on your, on your uh, telephone. On the telephone, right? Yeah, yeah. And... Actually, you left me another message. Actually, when I was at, at, at your door, you left me a message. Correct? Right. At 4.37, is that yeah, yeah. right before I knocked on your door, you left me a message on your door yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> about this case. So you kind of got hinked up about something. You thought, you know, what was us about? We were talking about this assaults and stuff like that. And one of the reasons why we were okay, doing you that... You you're really uncomfortable because oh. you wouldn't answer my question. I knew something was up. Well, and one of the reasons why, well, that's, that's fine. I, I understand that. One of the reasons why also, I'm going to tell you that, is actually, I didn't have all the answers because it wasn't my case. Nice. I'm assisting the Illinois State Police and Sycamore Police Department. You what? I'm assisting them. Okay. Okay? Yeah. This happened in their jurisdiction, but I'm assisting them. Answer me this first. Go ahead. Why would I call the FBI with a name that came to me in the middle of the night? If I, what name was that that came to me in life? Oh, that I hope to hell they look at it. Um, uh, Don Davies uh, and uh, Ken Davies mm -hmm. and uh, um, Brooks. Brooks. Brooks really. Um, they did look at Mr. Brooks. I just looked at his, the, the information from the Illinois State Police back in yeah. the year this happened. At. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did they talk the to him? Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's my best shot. Well, that's actually was actually pretty good information. Um, so a lot of things are inconclusive, and there's a whole lot of list of, uh, as you know, there's a whole lot of list of suspects at the time in this case. Now, all I do is I just work cold case homicide. Sure. That's all I ever do. Sure. sure. I'm in this room all the time, dealing with guys from your age to mid fifties. I work cases from from the late 1950s and usually up into the 1990s. That's all I ever do. Sure, sure. So I, I know what this is all about. Okay, yeah. uh, I know guys in your position also all the time. Also, I know what I can tell. What usually not tell when somebody's lying to me, when they're not lying to me, when they got something to hide, when they have something. There's a reason for them why they're lying, 
and because a lot of times it's embarrassment about certain aspects of their life. Mm -hmm. Like I know some some of the issues that are embarrassing, sure. embarrassing what happened with you and with your family. I don't give a shit about that. That has nothing really to do with this case. Yes. Okay. I realize that. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you about you and your sisters and things. Things happen like that. It has nothing to do with this case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's problems, one of the problems that I have here, reviewing this case, is I do, all I do is review, review, review case. I'm good for this job because I like to read. That's why my eyes are kind of going to shit. But everybody that can in your position and stuff like this, there's a reason why they want to hide a little bit of something. If there's some type of embarrassment, even back there they want to contact the FBI, help them out, which you did. I also believe reading the report, I believe you even helped with the search, I believe. I did. Okay, um, because you were actually known that you knew the area pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, you even knew the area down below. I think in the later fact, you're going to say something? McCullough seems to think that they would have gotten back to him about his tip, but that isn't the case. Contrary to popular fiction, the FBI doesn't share information like that with just anyone, much less someone that was a suspect themselves. Okay, I didn't know where she was kept, where she was recovered. You are, you don't know where she was recovered no, at. I don't have. What was the name of that area? I, how can I know if I don't know? Well, I mean, it was in the newspapers, and you lived around. The only thing I, mean, I know. Joe was, Davies. I'm, I'm not, I don't remember that area myself. Joe yeah. Davies County, or, or Joe Davies City, or something like that. See, that's something I don't know. Oh, okay. And and all I know is I and this is mm -hmm. this is vague recollection is that um, it was somewhere wooded. It was in a, It was south of town, I think, and it was quite a distance. Quite a distance from Sycamore. Okay. And and that's just I'm getting from from the newspaper. Okay. And the I'm sure you're getting from the newspaper from talking yeah, to other yeah, people yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the people um, who found her were uh, were supposedly mushroom hunting, but the article in the paper said they didn't believe their story because it wasn't a mushroom season. Okay, mushroom season comes usually in the early spring, uh, anywhere from uh, early spring to uh, late spring, like right now it's getting mushroom season, I believe. Yeah. Uh, from looking at my grass sometimes, and I believe, sh and once again I say, what I recall from the case, in some parts of the case you know more about than I do, but it's also one of the things I recall, I believe, I think she was found like in April or something, am I right? I don't know. Okay, but you're saying it was far See, from... See, I was in the service then. And when she was found, you were in the service. Yes. Yes. Okay. When she was found, you you were you were in the service. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously, back in the time, they didn't do polygraphs in the military like they do now and stuff and all that kind of stuff. No, the, the FBI gave me a mark. Oh no, no, no! But I, mean, I meant for the military. Yeah. Yeah. And you said she was a. She was far away from the, she was found far away in this, and I know, I'm telling you, I know she was found in that other county somewhere, and okay. so, what's the only way she could have gotten there? How could she have gotten there? I don't know. Oh, obviously, what, what mode of transportation? Had she be had a car. It had to been a car or a truck or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it was that type of distance, and this was, I believe, like, December 3rd, I believe that happened then. Do you remember what the weather was like then? 50 years ago, come on. Well, I don't know, but you were out there searching for it, and but, I, I don't remember. The ladies said it was snow. I have, I have oh, no okay. clue. I mean, certain memories that will stand out for mm -hmm. certain people. I don't have a clue. Oh, okay. Um, you mentioned a couple names to these people. Yeah. Okay. Um, Davies. Don Davies and Ken Davies. That's and somebody else in the name. You also named another guy. That Brooks. Brooks. Brooks lived with Don and, and Ken. Are these, were these guys your friends? No, they weren't my friends. They were neighbors, and they were they were they were ruffian neighbors. Associates? I mean, uh, no, no, did not have any school contact. Mates, uh, didn't have any contact with them. At never all. hung out with these guys. Oh no, these are bad guys. Oh okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, um, the uh, Don turned out okay. I don't know how Ken turned out, but Don got married, and the last I saw of him. He uh, uh, he had a, a painting business. He painted houses mm -hmm. and stuff. And um, he was a he was a tough guy. And um, uh, personally, I I would be afraid of him. You and him ever mix it up at all? No, no. Like Were you kidding? 
No, he well, was, you were in pretty good shape back he, then. I mean, he was he was he was older, and I didn't have any contact with him. No, the only thing I ever ever had contact with him is I I, I beat Ken one time wrestling. <laughs> okay, but that's just neighborhood stuff. I probably um, had uh, two contacts with with the uh, the older one in my whole life and the, and the younger one. So you were leery of these guys? That's, oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. fair to say? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. And were you, is it fair to say that, you know, like especially the one guy said, it's a kind of tough guy, you didn't want to end, you know, to end up getting your ass beat by these guys exactly. or something like that? Exactly. And so sometimes you'd go, you would never really go where somebody was there, you would never go rat these guys out thinking that it's going to come back and no, go no, get they, you back to they, you. No, that, that's not... Um, I, I don't even have, have, I don't suspect them of anything. You don't suspect them of anything? Not even in this case you don't suspect them Right. I, I, I can, maybe, Don, But no. didn't you give them the FBI names? I didn't give them Ken and, and, and Don's name. I gave them Brooks' name. Oh, Brooks' name. Okay. Because I was, I was, I mean, just out of a sound uh -huh. sleep, I woke up and I thought, that's him. He did it. I, I, because uh, what were you at when you were this is were you in your army barracks? Were you? No, no. I, this was this was, this was uh, right after. This that. was last year. Oh, I think it was last year. Maybe it was earlier. But anyway, it was whenever I called the FBI, which was in the last few years. Okay. And um, it, it, I felt so strongly about it, I called them up and left a message, and they never got back to me. Now, this little girl who got murdered here. Okay. Now you had. You were a pretty good guy back in the day, right? I'm not saying you're a bad guy. Now you're a good guy back in the day. This is a, a neighbor girl, kind of a neighbor. You're all in the same area. Like yeah, you mentioned that it was a, kind of a um, tight knit community or oh, something. Yeah. But she didn't really. This other girl, did, there's two girls there. And they didn't really know you, though, right? Obviously, they're not going to know an 18 year old man. I mean, they're little girls, but. No, I, um, they, I, I recognized the little girl. I knew her name. Oh, okay. Okay. And she, you know, she was. If, if you were on her block, she she never wandered very far from her home. Okay. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about mm -hmm. something like this. I, I feel that you're you know that you're hiding something that you're uh, that you're holding something back and that it's something that's embarrassing to you. But you got to realize, you know, you know you're you're kind of like in a world of shit right now, okay? And you're going to have to give up the truth, okay? Um, to save your own ass, to be smart, okay? So just listen to me, that's all I'm asking, all right? Um, there's certain things that happen here that I know happen, you know happen here. As nice and neat as the investigator's theory is, it just isn't possible. A collect call was made by McCullough at 657 from Rockford, and his name was taken down. Later at 715, officers confirmed that McCullough was there speaking with them about his enlistment. Um, once again, I'm not saying from reviewing this file, I'm not saying here that you killed that girl. Okay? I did not. I'm not saying you did. Okay. That's what I'm investigating <clears throat> for, right? You're, you're, that's exactly what you're being investigated for. All right. Okay. You're, you're, you're holding back some things here, which okay. isn't, has nothing to do with anything. Okay. Well, that's the part you're going to have to get out and let me decide that. All right. You're, you know. Life here is if we go boring. if we if we veer away from the little girl's murder, uh -huh. I'm claiming it. Okay, well I'm not. I don't want to veer go away from the little girl's murder. I, I, so you're saying you're worried about something else, but that's not the point. You're, you're missing my point. I'm talking about the little girl's murder here. Yeah, yeah. That you're you're holding something back on I'm that. Not holding anything well, back from that. I believe it is. And let me tell you why I think it is. Okay. Yeah. And then you then I want you to ask me questions about it also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Because you're gonna have some questions out of me. I really think that one of the problems with what happened here is I, I believe, from reading all the reports that I did, from the interview of that other little girl who was there, okay? What other little girl? There was two girls there. I don't know anything about a second girl. Okay, yeah, well, there were two girls out there. There were two girls out there, and they were um, playing out there when I believe that you came up there. What? Now, listen to me, and then you're going to ask me the questions. And once again, I'm not saying that you killed anybody, you understand me? Oh, man. Okay. That's what I believe happened. And I don't, and they, they said the little girl, 
you wrote the newspaper reports. And now, did you Google this stuff at all when you called the FBI? No. You got I me. Mean, you have. I, I went to your house today. I noticed you had a computer back yeah, there. Yeah. You did no research on this at all. No. In this case, you never have done that. No. So if they're researching your your, did your wife ever do any research on no. this? No. You never look like in the Sycamore Times or a newspaper or... No. Okay. Um, you, you made some reference about reading the newspapers before, though, correct? It's, it's, uh, it's just the, the, the only information I gave you is what I got out of a, a Sycamore newspaper, maybe. When was that? At the time or was don't recently? Know. Oh, don't. okay. Okay, but when you contacted the FBI, you don't know if that was last year or the year before. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah, there was another girl there also, and that you probably did. maybe I'll refresh your memory. Was she kidnapped too? Uh, no, she wasn't. How old was um, she? She was the same age. Uh, they were best friends. Oh really? Yeah, best friends. Okay. And uh, she's still alive today. And actually, I think you met the two detectives that were here. Actually, they inter actually another yeah, yeah, detective. Yeah, yeah. They interviewed her. Yeah. Okay. And once again, I'm saying this is where I, I believe that you're hiding something. Okay? okay. And I'll tell you why I think you're hiding something. I'm going to tell you you're wrong right now. Okay, well, well, you better hear what I say first right. before you say I'm wrong, okay? okay. Uh, what I believe is going to happen here is I believe that you did go out there. And did I, not. Oh, that, that's fine. Just let me, then you can ask, right. answer my questions. So these two girls were out there, and they knew that um, the guy, and they knew his, his Johnny. And Johnny said, and he was very nice to the girl, he knew uh, Maria, and, and he offered them a piggyback ride. And I believe that what happened is that that person was you. And, oh, and, my God. And that you did give them the piggy All right, right, I'm lawyer enough. Oh, that's fine, but just listen to what I'm saying. And they did give you a piggy back, right? But I didn't say, but that girl didn't say, you killed her. You understand that? Okay. But, so what happened, though, somebody left There is them. no way I could have even been in the area, okay? Why wouldn't you have been in the area? I was in the, I was in the induction center all day long. Okay, I didn't even know when she got, what time of day she got. I found out when I got home that mom says Maria's been kidnapped. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all I know. But if I if I, if I made a phone call from Rockford, which you got, I know right where it's at. Yeah, and at seven o'clock, after I got off the train, mm -hmm. Sycamore is thirty miles away from Rockford. This is an hour after she was kidnapped. Mm -hmm. I was on the train. So you took the train there? From Chicago to Rockford. From Chicago to Rockford? Yeah. Now why would you end up in Chicago? Chicago is where the induction center was. That's where the AFA station is at in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know that. Yeah. I spent the whole damn day there, and they've got they've got records, or mm -hmm. they had records of me from every goddamn minute from the time I arrived. I mean, mm -hmm. they were looking at my butt and everything, all day long. And then when I was done with it, I I don't remember perfectly, but I'm assuming I took the train because I did I wouldn't drive my car to Chicago, and I and I got rid of my car anyway because I was going in service. Actually, but you did have your car at that time, though. No. Uh, I believe it was a DeSoto. Is that what he said? No, no. Or, uh, the, um, the DeSoto, uh, 48 Plymouth Coupe, and it was a piece of crap. So when you got when you, were, you saved up money working your Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. And you, you said you had got rid of that car already with that, on that day? Yeah, yeah. Again, the investigator tries to bring McCullough's family into this, but the parents are dead, and the siblings were so young that their memories and motivations can't be entirely trusted and shouldn't really be considered any kind of evidence. So by December 3rd, you had that sold? Yeah. So you didn't have a car at all? Didn't have a car. And so somebody brought you to the train station? Yeah. And that was your friend, or that was? I don't know. You just don't remember? Yeah, Understandably years ago. so. Yeah. Uh, understandably so. Yeah. And, they, and the induction people they gave you, or the recruiters, I don't know, this was the Air Force or the Army you were going in, I forgot. I was going to the Air Force at that time. The Air Force, they gave you a ticket to take the Air to go off to the, to come to Chicago or Rockford, which one? I forget which one you're going to. I was in Chicago. You were in Chicago, okay. That's where the induction center. Okay. So my point is, how did you get from Sycamore to Chicago? I don't know. Okay. I probably took, uh, took a train, which may, I may have gone to DeKalb to take the train. But see, this is 50 years ago, I don't know. Now, Ms. Stanley, certain, like, certain things like that you're not covering. 
I'm going to go grab a picture here and I'll show you this one picture. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay? there from uh, the Illinois State Police, the ones who initiated this investigation, both ways. Actually, the FBI did it back when, I believe you talked about yes, it. Yes, yes. Now and I took the lie detector and I passed it. Actually, I looked at that uh, lie detector also. Um, did they tell you that you passed it? They freed me. Uh, did they tell you that you passed it? Did you recall? Um, I don't recall. But um, they just said, you know, you're free to go. And, 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 the, and the FBI agent that was taking care of me, he took me home. Mm -hmm. But uh, before I even went, I volunteered to go to talk to the FBI. I didn't have to go. Um, and they, they took me out to a, a motel um, uh, on the DeKalb Highway. And um, that's where they conducted the, the thing. And they they played Mutt and Jeff. One guy was mean to me, and the other guy was nice, like you. Oh, the good, the good cop, the good cop, the bad cop. Yeah, and the, and the bad cop guy said, "I know you did it, you bastard!" I don't think anybody's been playing bad cop with you here. That's kind of old school. Yeah, we're, yeah. I don't really use that too much. Most of them here, we're trying to get the truth out of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, you know, behoove us. Okay, you know, you're going to show me a picture. I'm going to ask you. Yeah, I want to show you a picture, but I want to ask you something else about somebody else also. Yeah, yeah. And. Um, Dennis, do you know a guy named Dennis? Doesn't ring a bell. Is it Trudell? Is that his name? Tordell. How do you pronounce that? D Dennis Tordell. Tordell. Yeah, okay. yeah. Tordell. What do you know about Dennis? Um, um, I lost track of him because uh, he got married young. And? That's all. Okay. Um, your relationship, um, you're, you're, you guys have pretty close knit family. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your mom, who's deceased now. Yeah. Okay. You're real tight with her. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Like you were from once again. I called my mom every every month of my life. I loved my mom to death. And my mom was my mom was brilliant. When she died, mm -hmm. my dad went, uh, was asked, um, "How many people do you think are going to come to the funeral?" Mm -hmm. And dad says, "Oh, maybe thirty to 40. 350 people showed up." Did you show up? No, I was in the service. And they wouldn't let you get home from military leave for your mom's funeral? Uh, were you in Vietnam then? Um, I don't remember, don't remember where I was. Okay, you were in Vietnam or something, weren't you? Were... I, oh, yeah, I was in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. 69. Okay. And that's when your mom... 70. When did your mom die? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the year. Okay. Um, Oh, I, let's see, I was here, I was here, I did go home to see her one last time, but I didn't go to the funeral. Did, was there a falling out or something? No. And probably it, your sisters? And... It, it was, no, it was just okay. um, how things worked out. Who's your next oldest, uh, are, you, are you the oldest? Oldest, yeah. And who's your next oldest sibling? Yeah. Okay, is it just no other brothers? Brother. Brother, okay. Uh, but, you're, but you're the next oldest sibling. I mean, you're, the next oldest sibling was Kathy. Yes. All right. Um, did Kit, Kathy ever talk to you about this? In, in later years? After your mom's passed away? No. She's never mentioned this uh, this case at all about it? No. Okay. Okay. Did your mom ever talk about this case to you? No. The girl the investigator is talking about is Kathy Stigman. Aside from the fact that she would have been old enough to identify someone in her neighborhood by name, there are several other things that make McCullough a poor fit. Kathy described the man as being in his early 20s, and he told them he was 24 and unmarried. Why would McCullough tell them this when they would know it wasn't true? Later, the FBI had Kathy look at a lineup of suspects. She positively identified a man who was 5 feet 4, had bushy blonde hair, and was 35 years old. None of this description remotely fits McCullough. 
believing she would then recognize him 50 years later is a stretch. Okay. I mean, when you were, I mean, talking back, way back, I'm talking. The only, the only thing Mom talked about was, it was uh, when I was going to go to, to see the FBI and she was crying and, and, I, and I said, Mom, don't worry, they'll, they'll clear me and it'll be all over. And you're talking about the FBI back when this uh, crime occurred. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. okay, obviously your mom was a sure. So you did talk to her about that and she was worried about it? Did, and that's all you told her about? I'm just going to tell them what I know? Sure, sure. Okay. And then you went down there and you took the polygraph? Yeah, and yeah. you came back home and you told your mom that you passed the polygraph? Yeah, fine, yeah. Okay. Um, remember I told you earlier, um, those are the texts, they showed you your train ticket, right, the, that they yeah. were able to obtain. I don't know anything about the train ticket. Okay. That was the train ticket that the recruiters actually gave you. It was, did you notice it was this number, it was a ticket that don't they actually know gave? That doesn't recall, you don't 50 recall? 50 years ago. I understand, I understand. Remember when I told you earlier that I thought, um, well, I'm going to lay out a couple things for you, let, let you know, yeah, I'll yeah. let you ask some questions yeah, to me, yeah. okay? Why do you think this investigation kind of got to reopen again? Probably because I made the call. Well, actually, it was going on a little bit before. You said you made the call to the FBI a year ago? I don't remember. Oh, okay, okay. Did they take your name down, obviously? Did an agent call um, you back? Nobody called me back. What field office did you call it? Like in New York. You called the New York FBI field office from I Seattle? I think so. Wait a second. Remember, there's one time I called the, the local FBI office. But I don't remember what I called them about. And by local, you're saying Seattle here? Seattle, yeah. Where did you call from your cell phone? Did you call why? Uh, no, I, I called from home. Oh, from your house here? Yeah. Okay. And did, yeah. They, did an agent call you back? I mean, Nobody, usually you call there and you. No, no. So were you able to talk to an agent? Um, Wait a minute. I, it, it, I, when I talked to talk the local office, it was it was I think it was about um, it was about um, a, a a friend of mine who told me that they were talking. Uh, he was he was lived with us for a little while. He was he was a uh, um, a Pakistani, mm -hmm. and um, he told me about um, some stuff going on in the mosque, and, and I called up to, I called up the FBI and I, and I said. They're, you know, they're, they're trash talking us in the mosque, and and they and he's and the and the, the person who I talked to said, "Don't worry about it. We've got the mosque covered." So that's the only time I talked to the FBI here, and but I'm pretty sure I talked to the FBI in New York. Uh, in New York, and this was just a couple. It was about this case. Yeah. And you were just inquiring about and, what's the status of the case. Well, no, I I told him about the I told him about the. Uh, um, the guy, um, tell me the name. Oh, the guy we just mentioned? Yeah, yeah. Brooks. Oh, Bob Brooks? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, and that's... So that's what you need to... So anyway, well, anyway I'll be able to, they'll be able to verify that because every phone that... Well, why would, you, why would you call the Chicago field office? I'm just curious. I didn't call Chicago. You did not call Chicago? I thought I called New York. Well, I know, that's what I'm saying. Why wouldn't you have called the Chicago field office? I, I just don't know him. Oh, no, I just want to show you something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I remember my, what I was telling you about earlier, I said, I didn't think you killed her. Okay? Remember I told I said that yeah, to you? Yeah. I said, I believe that you were there. Right. And there was the other little girl that I wasn't. wasn't there. Oh, okay, well, I I'm not saying you were there. I'm not yeah. saying, well, no, you haven't proved me. You remember you said that you were, I'm not saying you were there when she was killed. Okay. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that you right. took the girl down over. I, I, I told you. Well, you're absolutely wrong. I, 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 I didn't even go over on that block, uh, hardly ever. You didn't go over that block over there? Right. That was, that was that the area I hung around. The, my, my neighbor kids were closer. Slide that over there, would you? Yeah. Don't know any of these guys. Slide that over there. Don't know any of them. Okay. All right. We don't want to use this. Now, 
that little, I told you there was the two little girls there, there, one girl that got killed and the other little girl. She said the person, actually the person who came there who said his name was Johnny, who lived nearby and gave him a piggyback ride. They said he was very nice and they said he was one of these guys here and her names and she signed her name on the bottom, the bottom of that photograph. Can you picture anybody out here that you know in this photograph? I don't know any of these guys. And I don't think any of these guys are from Sycamore. I'm just taking a look at every picture and turn it over to you. It's definitely start with one and then just look at it. And just... Well, no. No. These guys aren't from Sycamore. Okay. What do you think this guy looks like? Like? He might look like me, but I... Maria was seven years old. She wasn't old enough to know who he was, but by all accounts, she was a shy, nervous girl. So it is doubtful she would speak to a 17-year-old boy if she was on her own. They lived in a small enough town that even if you didn't know someone well enough to socialize with, you still knew enough to put a name to a face. But he's too feminine looking. you from a wedding picture. Obviously that's Xerox. Hmm? It's a Xerox picture. That was you. It's, it's a little whited out right there. That's you from a wedding picture that was put into this montage that the girl said it was Johnny that gave the girl the piggyback ride. Once again, she didn't say you killed him, but that's what they're saying. Number two, listen to this part. Number two. Okay. Jack, look at me. Number two. Okay. You know, you know why this other case got other information we received? This, mm -hmm. is, this is all documented. This other information that we received. Know who said that? Know who told us that you did this? Someone who I think is a pretty, from all the information I read, is a very smart person, a very intelligent person, and someone who had lived with a bunch of guilt for a long time before she passed away. Yeah, you're going to say my mom. That's bullshit. Well, why, why do you say it's bullshit? Because she wouldn't suspect me of murder, and she knew where I was. I'm telling you exactly. I'll show you the documentation that said that you that she said that you're the one who did this, and that she said she was ashamed of it. And getting back to this, this is that other little girl who said, and this is her signature right down here. Once again, this is Xerox. I said, now Jack, once again, I still think you're covering for somebody. I think somebody did something there. I think you were there when this, not when the girl got killed, but I think you were there when the girl got the little piggyback ride. I'm not saying you took the girl and killed. I'm saying you were there, there, and then you walked off, or somebody else came up to her, came up there, and you remembered this, and you're trying to hide this or cover for somebody, and you're gonna, you, you know, I don't know who you're trying to cover for. If it's one of these other, I'm not covering for anybody, about. and I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think I ever gave uh, Maria or her friends a piggyback ride for Christ. Well, it was just Maria, not the other girl. The other girl was there, and she was standing, and she picked you, and she completely picked you out. Yeah. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that you are the person who was there. I'm not saying that you went and killed her. I should say you're trying to hide something else. And I don't know if you're trying to cover for somebody or whatever. Everybody. You were the person who was there during this time. This is, this is two blocks away from my house. Okay. Everybody in the neighborhood knew me. Okay. Knew me. Mm hmm. What did they know you as? Or who did they know you as? Did they know you as Johnny? Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's two, two Johnnies. I was Big John, and, and he, he was Little John. The other, the other kid was Little John. Who, who was the other kid? Um, uh, Johnny Boyce. Was that one of your buddies? He was a neighbor. He was, lived uh, two houses away, or one house away. Was he with you? No. I mean, did you hang with the guy? I'm saying no. Oh, he, 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 he was younger than me, but um, they, they called him Butterball, too. But his... Uh, his his brother's name was Ed, and and uh, and he was uh, John as well. So um, they, they, all the neighborhoods 
would call me Big John. Okay. Well, but you're also known as Johnny, is that correct? McCullough mentioned getting a lawyer earlier, and he should have one with his instinct. He doesn't realize that everything he is saying is only going to be used to say that he had been watching Maria and had become obsessed with her, giving him a motive. Um, I don't know. If, uh, as a teenager, I was known as Johnny. Okay. I was John. Then. Well, she's saying it was Johnny. She's saying this was the Johnny who did. She didn't say you hurt anybody. Okay, but she's saying that you were the guy there who gave him the piggyback ride. And she went back home to go get a doll or to go back and get a mittens. And when she came back, the two of you were gone. So it's either saying that you actually left that area and the little other girl left the area went with somebody else. Okay, but there's no doubt in her mind that you were the guy who was there. Now, we can't sugarcoat this any other way, is you got to tell us exactly what happened there. Okay. And by saying I don't remember, because you do remember this, you know, you remember so much detail okay. about that day. You're full of shit. Okay. I'm full of shit. I don't that remember. Numbers. I don't remember anything like this. You don't remember anything like that at all. No. Do you remember giving any little girl a, a piggyback? No. Right? Have you ever given her a piggyback? No. Right? Neither one of them girls. You never Neither gave one of them. them. Okay. You never gave neighbors or, or your sisters or anybody piggyback rides. You were good with the kids, weren't you, in the neighborhood? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, not not a. She was tiny. She was tiny. How yeah. tiny was she? She's about the same time, so this tall. She was that 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 tiny. She was that was she? Okay. The last time I saw her um, was uh, probably months before this happened, and um, she was uh, just walking down the street. And I just passed her, and that's the last I saw her. Was she by herself? Yeah. So this was months before, so this had to be in October or something? Probably. Okay. And did, did she say, hi, Johnny? Or she did didn't you? know me. Oh, she, so she didn't know you? Yeah. Okay. And she walked by your house? No. She wouldn't walk more than a block, a block. She wouldn't walk more than two or three houses away from her house. She uh -huh. was just little. Okay, well, how, how would you know that? You're, you're surmising. I've seen, I've, I lived in the neighborhood. Okay. And, and uh, we, you know, we, we uh, the neighborhood boys and me, we played, and we would see the, see the other kids around. It was, it was just a normal neighborhood. Well, now, the other guys, like I said, you've seen the other girls around, or the other kids around, with, with the other guys that you'd hang out with and stuff. They, you, know, you know how guys are. And you're young, then, too. You're, what, 17, 18 years old at the time? Uh, I was 17. I went up the, the I went in the Air Force, and the day after I was in, I think I was, I think I, maybe, yeah, I think I turned 18 just after I got in the service. And you see these these kids around the neighborhood, like you know, the guys are sitting up on the stoop or you know sitting on the porch in, in the neighborhoods like we used to do back in the sure, day, sure. right, right, and kids are going by and stuff. And sometimes kids, guys are going a little raunchy or something to say something about, usually like for older girls or something, or, other, or older boys no, and we, stuff. No, I'm not saying that you did, but any of these other guys, did you have any suspicion about any of these other guys? No. No. None of but, these guys that you no, hung out with? No. Matter of fact, they're all, one of them's a banker, the other one I think is a lawyer. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that, you know, and, but, but you also mentioned about some guys that you were kind of frightened of, right? Yeah, the Davies boys. The Davies boys. Yeah. So when this little girl come walking by, did you know her family at all? Knew her family and knew her sisters. Um, I bet I didn't know I uh, know her family. I, did, I, I, I had seen them, I, and I had been over... Oh, my God, I got crap. I had some water. Thanks. I had been over to... Um, I had been over to their house uh, um, a couple of times. Their sisters uh, were aspiring actresses. And so they would always create a play or something like that. Mm -hmm. And one time I was invited in their backyard to watch one of their plays. And that was a one-time event. I don't remember when that was. Did you ever handle her, cl her clothing, her, her jacket, or anything like that? Didn't touch anything. Never, like never you, touched You never thing. touched her, her, her jacket? Never touched uh, anything. When you were at her house? Anything, no. Okay. Now, were her sisters, you, were her sisters, you said when you went to her house with the little place? Older sister was... Older sister, were they your, your sister, your sister, your younger sister, were they the same age? They, they were about the same age, but they didn't play over there with those people. 
Well, how did you get hooked up with these people? They asked me one time to come see the play. The little girls did? No, the sisters. The older, okay. the older sisters. But, but I mean, how old are we talking? Um, they were about my age. Well, the oldest one was about my age, and then there was two sisters, I think. One was, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Right. Patty, Not exactly, but yeah. Patty, Patty, I think, was the oldest one. She's the one who put on the play. And she had a, a sister that was younger than her. Um, so you'd go over there and you'd see the plays and stuff? And the, I went one, one time. time. Okay, but they invited you other times, you said? No. Oh, they only invited you one time? One time. And you went there? Yeah. To, to watch the play? Yeah, okay. which I didn't think much of. <laughs> well, was it much of a... Yeah. Was it much of a critique? Sit right there. I, I got to get some. You want some more coffee in there? No. Thank you. Okay, find, now these you, other, you find, these other, find these other okay. pictures and stuff, but you're, a, Do you you're remember? looking at that. Who's that? Oh, that's me. That's you and that's you, too. That's the same picture. Well, this is a very poor picture. Well, it's just, I didn't even it's, recognize it's, myself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Remember that name? Huh? No. That's interesting. I was in love with that woman for so many years, she didn't, she didn't even know it. What's the date on that? 1957, June 22nd. June, June, what was that? 22nd. 22nd. First night club date. That's funny, that's funny. See, in other words. That was. Thank you for showing me this. This brings back wonderful memories. She knew he is. She knows he is Johnny. And you, when she was interviewed, she said that's what you were called, Johnny. Yeah. And remember her dad? Yes. And what was her dad's job? His dad was, he was a photographer. They had a they had a they had a mansion on on. Uh, Maybe Main Street or something like that. And I went back recently, not recently, but um, a few years ago I, w I went back and the house was uh, um, on display. Their home was on display? Yeah, yeah. And, the, um, and if uh, they had, uh, people had. The 93-year-old woman on cancer medication is probably not the most reliable of testimonies. Adding to that is the fact that the person claiming this is McCullough's sister, who do not have a good relationship with him. Granted, they did it and fixed it up. It was, it was, a, it was a, a huge house. Aurora. Don't even remember, but that's great. That's Jan, correct? Yeah. Janice. Yeah. Good stuff. There were a couple of times you said you, you took the FBI test, the polygraph at the FBI. Yeah. 
And you told somebody actually that she told your mother that you passed it? Yeah. Well, actually, you failed that test. And did you, you, did you tell, did the FBI tell you that you passed the test, or did they say it was in the I watched the it? test. I was, I was hooked up to it. I watched the test. It didn't have any when, when I answered the question. They said, did you murder, blah, blah, blah. I said, no. Did they ever ask you, did you murder her? Um, did you kill her, I guess? Okay. There was a point in that, in that questionnaire that was actually, it was actually a pretty short interview with that when the FBI conducted that polygraph examination. Oops, your leg's still tight on you? Yeah, yeah. Um, let you drink some water. There was a part of that polygraph when they were when they were interviewing you and they said, you know how it shows that you're deceptive and stuff? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, the old days it was a little bit more of a, a little line. Actually, you would not actually be able to decipher it, but a good poly examiner will, will be. And did you know anything about the homicide, uh, or the disappearance of this girl? And, and you said no. And, and have you ever seen her before? And were you in contact with these two girls that day? Your thing said it was deceptive. Once again, I'm going back to this. And um, you said before you never gave her a piggyback ride, or are you, now you're saying that you may have that another time. Never. I mean, earlier you said that you, you didn't know if you gave her one or not. But you're, now you're saying you never ever gave her a piggy, piggyback ride. Okay. You remember me asking for a lawyer? No. As we were walking out of the building, I said, "I want a lawyer." Did you? And you were standing right beside me. Uh huh. Who'd you say that to? You. To me? Yes. In this building here? No, no. Um, up at the, uh, uh at, at the, at my building. At the Four Freedoms? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't recall that. That's uninteresting. Hmm. Now, these in the Texas interviews. Because you said, don't worry about it. Uh, that's all I said to you? Yeah. The, the, this one I was driving you in here? No, no. Walking out of the building. Okay. So what, what, is, what is it you're saying to me now? What I'm saying to you now uh -huh. is you think I have something to do with it. What did I tell you? What did I tell you I think you had something to do with? The murder? Did I, did, did I say that I think you had something to do with being there with those two girls before she was taken? I said you're being deceptive about something. You were deceptive. You were deceptive in your. You were deceptive in your polygraph with the FBI. You were deceptive. Deceptive when you were, your mother, on her deathbed, believes that you were involved in this. On her deathbed, she said this. Okay. Are you tell me you don't know about that. Don't know about that. Okay. I don't, I don't well, believe you, it either. You don't believe that? Huh. I'll go and I'll find the documentation on that yeah. for you and I'll bring it to you. Okay? Doesn't matter. Okay. Why would your mother say that to you? Your mother doesn't seem, all the reports that I read, it doesn't seem like your mother's the type of person who's going to make something up out of nowhere. No, she normally, she wouldn't. Okay. And this didn't happen. And what didn't happen? Th th what you're telling me, it didn't happen. You, did your mother didn't, on her deathbed, yes. didn't say that you did yes. this? Right, my mother knew I didn't do it. Yeah. So she just made this up? She decided to Somebody made it up. up? Somebody made it up. There's a whole bunch of making up here. Who's making up? Are these people? Are I've this? heard so many things today. I, I had no knowledge of. Well, I don't know what you, what the other guys asked you about. Yeah. But, uh, this girl here is saying this is Johnny. Yeah. This girl here gets a train ticket, an unused train ticket that you were supposed to have used and you didn't use that night, but she still happened to have by Johnny. Yeah. Okay. Saying that you were you were involved in this. There's no way my mother would say that unless she was out of her mind. Was your, was your mother out of her mind at that time when she was dying? No. Why would you know? You told me earlier that you talked to her every single day. Can't, no, I didn't say that. Yes, you did I say said that. A month. Oh, every month that you talked to her. Yes. Not every day. Every month of her life. So when you were talking to her, when she was even when I was overseas, I called her. Did she have some dementia at the end when she died? And could, could, was it the she early nineties that she, she died. She had cancer. But why would she had cancer? Would she say you did this? That you were involved. She in died this? of cancer. They 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 took so much out of her. There wasn't anything left to take out. 
And she never men mentioned this to you then, no. at the end? No. So she doesn't sound like she, she, <coughs> She's a spiteful. Excuse no. me. <coughs> she's not spiteful, is she? No. McCullough is being arrested for the murder, and the investigator is still putting off letting him see a lawyer. He is also trying to get McCullough to confess based on very shaky witness testimony, but McCullough still maintains his innocence. Hey, Jack, we got some pizza. Are you hungry? You've been here. Oh, great, time. thanks. I'll, I'll get you a piece of pizza. Excellent. Mike, you want pizza? Yeah. Okay, come here, help. Come here, help. Thanks. Sit there with that. So we don't have any paper plates, so it's just napkins. Great, thanks. Water good? You want a Coke? Water's good. All right, thanks. there you go. Thank you very Take much. Take it easy. Else. Oh, my, my pizza. Pizza. So you guys are probably both starving. You want your pizza? No, I'm dead. Okay, now that I know that you think I'm involved, I really do want a lawyer. Okay. Sounds like a winner to me. Yep. Sounds like a winner to me. And then I'll just end this. Um, I'll end our conversations then. You do not want to talk to me anymore. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're done. Okay. No, that, that's fine with me. That's fine with me. You'll be booked. And you've heard of the fruit of the poisonous tree, right? The fruit of the poisonous tree. Right. Um, so everything you've asked me since we left the building is no good. Everything I've asked you since you've left the since we've left the building. That's right. When I asked for a lawyer. You asked me for a lawyer. Yes. I said I want a lawyer. Okay. And I said no. Yeah. Well, you didn't say no, but you blew me off. I blew you off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to be arrested. You're, you're under arrest for murder. Okay. You're going to be... Uh, Placed into the King County Jail. Okay, I need a phone call. You, um, hang on, I'll get to that. Um, the phone call stuff all comes from over the jail. We don't have anything to do with that. Okay. They, they give you the phone call as they see fit. Uh, you'll have a first appearance probably tomorrow. I don't know what time is it right now. It's, um, this is 20 You'll probably have first quarter appearance um, Thursday or Friday, your second appearance. They'll ask you if you want to waive extradition or not. If fight extradition doesn't make any difference, you're going to be extradited. Um, to Chicago, and then you'll be placed into the DeKalb County Jail there, where you wait, wait sentencing. Probably going to be a little meaty on this thing too, but um, that'll come as soon as they book you into the jail. <coughs> You're making a really big mistake. I am innocent. Prove it. What did I say the whole time? You've made up your mind already. What did I say? Did I say you killed that girl? You've made up your mind already. Did I say that you killed that girl? Did you? I'm asking you, did I say that to you? No, I never said that to you. What did I say that I knew you did? Tell me. I'll tell you exactly what I said. I said I knew you were out there and you gave those girls the piggyback ride. Not her, but Maria. That's right. I didn't say you killed her. I said, that's said you gave her the piggyback ride. Then how can you arrest me for murder? Who's that? Um, I don't know if it's Maria or not. Yeah, it is Maria. The investigator presses harder, hoping to shake McCullough up. It's true allegations have been made, but allegations are not enough to overcome the concrete evidence that places McCullough elsewhere at the time. But they aren't going to pass up a golden opportunity to close a cold case, and McCullough is a perfect scapegoat. Yep, 
figure out who you, and you said you went over to her house before. Yeah, and long before this. Well, obviously before this happened. Yeah. Yep. This, and, this and was the little girl that was. between you and me? I want the person who did that to be strung up. I what, want, what did want to happen to them? The electric chair. Yeah. Um, they don't have the death penalty in Illinois anymore. Yeah. We have it here in Washington, but they don't have it in Illinois anymore. Yeah. They're a little more barbaric than we are. I told you before, I didn't think, I, I never said you, you killed her. I knew that you were there, though. I knew that you were there when those girls came out, when that girl picked your picture out there and said, Johnny. And she signed her name right there. Yeah. I didn't even recognize that picture myself. Well, don't forget, this is a, a carbon from what the... Uh, yeah, right. picture was. But you do know who that is there. Yeah. And you tell me you yeah. still don't, you know, you do recognize that as being you, right? I, I didn't. Okay, but you do now though, correct? Yeah. Okay. So that's you. So this, why would this little girl say, this guy who said his, his name is Johnny no, is the one who did this? So no, that's just out of the blue, so the little girl's going to say that. So you go tell that to the uh, grand jury when they're investigating this, and they go like this, and you, you tell them that, ah, no, it wasn't me. And you tell them why your mom was on her deathbed and why they didn't, why the family didn't want you to come to her funeral, insisted that you don't come to her funeral. And why was the other, what's your other little sister's name? What was her name? Oh, God, the dog. Um, investigative report here by Illinois State Police. And what I have been doing the rest of my life already in, in the prison. You. I've already Oh, ah, bullshit. You, you walk in circle that you, you, I you, I you contradicted yourself 20 you, fucking I times. You, I told you I didn't do it. You contradicted yourself about everything else. That's here. the truth. So what happened then? You didn't do it. Who did it then? Who are you, who are you covering for? I am not covering Oh, you're telling me you weren't there. I and have then, it, then that girl piggyback, right? I of have. all the people in the world, this girl says you're the one who gave the piggyback, right? When she went back. I have no idea. Okay, so that's going to be your defense? I have no idea why that girl picked me. I have no idea why my mother said I did it. I have no idea how I lied and how I failed the FBI polygraph test. I said I took the, I took the train, even though here's the ticket that the girl, your girlfriend gave to you. That you gave to your girlfriend that she kept for 50 years. Well, look at this. Kind of a good stroke of luck on our part. Not so lucky on your part. You agree? I didn't do it. Well, who did that? I have no idea. No idea. And you even helped help search for the little girl. Yep. You know how many times I've been in this room I have to listen to this kind of bullshit from people like you that saying this, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, you know? And then it comes down to court time and then all of a sudden, eh, I better start doing, thinking about what really happened here. And it's usually a little bit too late. You do realize this. You're, you're under arrest. You're going to be going... Right next door here to the Cook to the King County Jail, and then you're going to be going to taking the big airplane back to your hometown of Sycamore. When was the last time you were in Sycamore? You weren't there for the funeral. I was there two weeks before the funeral. Wow. You didn't make it for the funeral though. Why didn't they want you there? It wasn't that bullshit you told me earlier that you were in the army because actually you weren't in the army back then. We're done. Yeah. No. What happened? Where's, we're done. Where's my lawyer? I think you'll get it when you go to Illinois. Right? Give me a holler sometime. You think you're right, but you're wrong. No? You want to talk to me or not talk to me? I can't keep going back and forth here with you. I got shit I got to do too, man. All right? You don't want to talk to me, you want to? Fine. Done with your coffee, together. You want still want to drink your water? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna need your. Uh, I'm gonna need your watch. Uh, you got anything in your pockets? Nothing in my pockets. Okay. Just stand up and uh, empty that set off for me, would you please? Yeah. Okay. In your back pocket, sir.
Go ahead, buddy. Take a seat. You want any more? Want to hit a coffee before you don't get coffee in jail or prison? Yeah. You want me to heat this up or not? No. Uh, you need to use that. I'll come back to you use that. All right. Just doing the paperwork uh, to get you. Okay, I'll need to go to the other. You need to use the bathroom? Yeah. Okay, well, one minute. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Just, just water, not coffee. Water. On September 14, 2012, McCullough was convicted of the kidnapping and murder of Maria Rudolph and received a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 20 years. McCullough appealed several times, but without much success. Finally, in 2015, there was an extensive review of the evidence which showed the facts were withheld that conclusively proved that McCullough could not have been in Sycamore at the time of Maria's abduction. Given the timing of the telephone call logged by Illinois Bell, the approximately 40 mile distance between Sycamore and Rockford and icy road conditions, it was concluded that McCullough was not the person they were looking for. McCullough was declared innocent of the crime by the DeKalb County Circuit Court on April 12, 2017.